Hi everyone, this is Meir, and I was so happy to have a wonderful six-day workshop here. It was one of my best, and I just met today my wonderful client who told me that her near vision had improved a lot. For some, it was the far vision. For some, it was the near vision. For some, it was both. And I also was happy to see that some students took an initiative and they met at our school to keep practicing. They just didn't want to stop practicing the natural vision improvement. This is one place where so much depart from the conventional thought that vision cannot improve. It can and it can improve big time. Seeing the results that was in that class where basically 85% of the people who measured the vision measured improvement to different degrees. That's for me is very heartwarming. And I hope that my next six days in Frankfurt will be just as good. And I have a feeling it's going to be even bigger than the big class I had here. You probably saw the class on the beach as Ron uh, took pictures of that class and did a pretty good job with it. Uh, I would like today also to say goodbye to Ron, who is leaving our place and uh, did very good job in the time that he worked here. And we'll have a new person who will help with our uh, technical needs, uh, who will start soon. His name is Lars. And we always had smooth transition in our office and in our work. Um, what I want to talk to you about today which is very, very important to me, is about viruses. Pay attention to what happened with the coronavirus. How hysterical the whole world is over it. You could see that the Chinese government was so hysterical that the person who found it had to uh, write under torture that he lied and made a mistake and then he died from the coronavirus and then when they discover that the virus is uncontrollable finally they talked about it look what happened to the poor people who were stuck on different uh, boats and cruise ship that other countries wouldn't really take them out and allow them even to have quarantine in their place as they do now so we're very afraid of viruses. Fear is as bad as the virus itself. I'll never forget how Vered, my very good friend and perhaps the best practitioner I ever trained, had polio as a year and a half old baby. And her mother, who nursed her, also nursed a kid from another village whose mother did not have milk. That was in Morocco. And she was told that if she nurses another kid, a curse will fall on her and her family. Just imagine the fear of that mother when she nurses Vered. What a fear. Well, when a mother is fearful, something can happen to the child. And when that virus goes through, it can definitely affect the child. So in the polio case, 85% of the kids and adults that got polio had no symptoms or very mild symptoms like the flu. Then 2% died. And the other 13% who were left had paralysis of different kinds. And we all are grateful to the, uh, to the immunity from the polio, polio virus. But the fear of humanity never went away. Look what happens to other diseases like cystic fibrosis. I remember the kid that I worked with with cystic fibrosis when I was 19 and 20 year old. And then they were expecting to leave about... 16 to 18 years and I can tell you that my client 
live to be 50, and also that finally they live much longer because they decided physiotherapy can help them, some medications can help them, and somehow the hysteria around that illness have decreased. Did not disappear, but decreased. So then we had influenza that killed so many young adults around the First World War. And then we had SARS a few years ago, and now we have Corona. What happens in Corona? People mainly survive it. Some people don't even have symptoms. They just discover the virus in their system through the blood and other tests. Some had flu-like, and that's basically most of them, more than 80%, flu-like symptoms. And they're harsher than the influenza. There is real terrible feelings, sometimes short of breath, high fever, and at the end, they recover, and probably their immune system becomes stronger. But then, you have some whose immune system that tries to heal them from the virus, but doesn't have enough ways of doing it, attacks their own body. And what it mainly attacks is their lungs. And after it attacks their lungs, sometimes medicine can help them, and sometimes they die. Here I come back to us. Look what medicine also does. While sometimes the sun is hard on the skin, mainly the sun is helpful to the skin, helpful, helpful to the eyes. Sometimes it's hard on the eyes, but it's mainly helpful to the eyes, and it is fantastic for the immune system. So if you don't want to be a subject of an unknown virus, and I must tell you, I'm confident that medicine will find an immunity and definitely a solution to the coronavirus. I'm completely confident of that. People are sitting in lab and I have a feeling they already are close to the solution. But even when that solution comes, there'll be another virus, maybe even worse, and another one, and another one. And the problem starts with our immune system. Our immune system could be much better the lymph could flow better. The white blood cells could come much better to protect our body. That is, if we start to live in a different way. First of all, I will never forget one of my clients who told me the most important food for the body is light. I truly, truly accept that. Then it's air. Then is water and then is food. Let's make sure that we breathe fresh air. That's why I am by the beach. Let's make sure that we have enough light exposure and not hide from the light in a way that really destroys our immune system and the body. Let's make sure that we have clean water, purified water, good water, and we walk a lot near water and start to pay attention to your diet. And more than everything, make sure that you do movement in a way that is helpful and not destructive to your body. Subtle, measured, balanced movement. That is the real food you need, your own circulation. So when the virus hits everyone, your immune system will destroy it quickly, will become strong for it, and will be able to defend you at all times. It is so important that your immune system will be able to produce the immunity even for virus and bacteria it did not recognize yet on its own. And it will be able to face any virus, but that comes with your health. And that is the message of self-healing. We don't replace the work of acute care in the medical practice. We don't even attempt to. We believe in it. But at the same time, acute practice cannot replace your inner health. Why won't you be one of those 
who gets a virus and is never symptomatic, gets a good immune system, destroys that virus, and actually is ready for it again. We have thousands of viruses around us that we are easily destroying. But the immune system can destroy the body if the body did not produce it in a good way. That's why we have autoimmune illnesses like rheumatoid arthritis. And some people even say that multiple sclerosis in part is autoimmune. Well, let's strengthen our immune system. Move, breathe, relax, have positive thoughts. Do you know that this person in Japan who is now 112 and is kicking, is in great health, said that his secret is he was never angry at anyone in any way. Amazing. I'm meeting so many angry people in my life that the only thing you can ask them to do is to express their anger so it won't eat them from the inside. Well, if we're able to get to an emotional peace, even if it's not perfect, but at least more or less, move in a balanced way, expose ourselves to light, expose ourselves to air, enjoy the water, eat healthy food, and move, then we have nothing to fear. Virus can attack anyone else but us. Talk to you when I come back from my trip to Argentina and Brazil. Many blessings to all of you. Mayor. <laughs>